Hello again, it's Michael Bulbenko, one of the Fuji guys. And in this episode, which will be about 15 minutes long, we are going to learn how to make a performance music video. Yes, a music video with a real live band uh, and multiple cameras. Now, I happen to use uh, two Fujifilm cameras in the making of this piece. It was the Fujifilm X-T3 APS-C size sensor and the Fujifilm GFX100, which is the large size sensor. Uh, both of them basically have the same video specs. Uh, both cameras were set to UHD 4K for internal recording. I did 24 frames a second and I chose the highest bit rate I could, which was 400 megabit per second. Now the bit rate is important here because the cameras are going to be moving a lot and you have uh, rock musicians that are going to be moving a lot. So to avoid compression artifacts, always try to get the highest bit rate you can. In terms of color, uh, again, I was recording internally to the SD cards and I chose to set the cameras to the Eterna film simulation, which is a really nice, delicate, cinematic look uh, because I didn't want to have to do a lot of uh, grading and post-production. I didn't feel I had to shoot log because I was going to be in a controlled environment. So the Eterna film sim was really all I needed. Um, and as you'll see, I used a variety of lenses and a variety of camera setups. Even though we used Fujifilm cameras for this, Everything that I'm teaching you here can be done with any kind of camera. It's general filmmaking techniques for making a music video. And I want to say for those of you just getting started, making a music video is an excellent, excellent way for you to get into the basics of learning how to do camera movement and lighting um, and starting on editing. So for editing, uh, you are going to need special film editing software. Uh, some of it comes bundled with a lot of computers. Some of it you have to buy separately. I have one that I've been using for 15 years. There's lots and lots of good stuff out there. Just look around, uh, find the price point you're happy with. And it really comes down to user interface because they all basically offer the same capabilities and functionality. All right, there's two things you need to start. One is a band. Hi. Two is a song. I strongly recommend that you pick a song the band has already recorded, even if it's only in a rough mix, not just something they're writing. A, there's a technical reason for it, which you'll get to in a minute, but B, there is an important creative reason for it, and that is that you, as the director and the cinematographer and the producer, really need to understand what the song's about. You need to feel it, okay? You're gonna have to live with it as you're planning and scripting everything. So it's very important that you have that music to listen to over and over and over again. And of course, you're going to work with the band in creating whatever the visuals are, whatever the storyline is, uh, whatever the locations are in the wardrobe. So everything that you do before actually being on the set is known as pre-production. And I'm gonna tell you, in my opinion, pre-production is far more important than what actually happens on the set. You want to think about everything. You want to plan for every eventuality because things do go wrong. And if you don't think of something, you don't discuss it ahead of time, you may be on a location and suddenly realize you can't accomplish whatever your big dream was because somebody forgot to bring a piece of equipment maybe. So I do make a little bit of uh, pre-production planning. Uh, in this particular video, it was just a very simple lighting plan. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't need software to do it. But this way I can talk to the band about where they're going to be standing and I have an idea of where the lights are going to be. Um, and then you should have some kind of a script. Yes, even though there's no dialogue, this isn't a narrative feature film, you really need to think about the order that things are going to be shot in. What comes first? What comes in the middle? What comes in the end? And this will be dictated by time constraints and wherever you are on location. So pre-production, vitally, vitally important. Now, one really essential thing you must do in your pre-production for a performance video is to create a sync track. Remember, a performance video is the band is actually playing live on camera, right? So the band has to move their mouths 
to the lyrics in time to the track. They have to play their instruments in time to the track. So why do this ahead of time? Why not just record them actually playing while you're doing the video? So the problem with that is it may mean bringing in extra amplification, mixing boards, extra microphones, more cable, um, all kinds of audio things in order to get the correct sound that is much better done in the studio beforehand. And besides, um, unless they're actually recording a live album uh, and releasing a concert film to go with it, it's the pre-recorded track is what people are going to be used to hearing on the radio or in their streaming, right? So it's the pre-recorded track you're going to use in the edit. So you need to create the sync track that you're going to take with you to the location to enable the band to follow along as you're shooting the video. Here we are in location for the video. As you can see, it is a school auditorium. And the reason for that was because the song we're recording is something called Pushing 40 uh, by the band The Armoires from Los Angeles. And so obviously the song is about, uh, you know, reaching a certain age and looking back on the past. So we thought it would be kind of an interesting uh, concept to play in a school auditorium. And as you'll see in the in uh, final video, there is a person, a mysterious person that watches. Uh, we don't exactly know, is she auditioning them or is she a record executive? It's a bit mysterious. We're having fun with that. Um, one of the things you'll see, which uh, as we uh, go through the video, you'll notice that I've got two different colors of lights on the stage itself. Uh, there's daylight balance lights for the band in the front, but in the back, the curtains that are gold, I've actually put tungsten balance lights on the curtains. The purpose of that is to bring out the yellow and make it more golden and to kind of make it feel like a sunset. You know, we're pushing 40, so there's a sunset in the back. Um, also, I put a couple of tungsten lights aiming in at the band to give everybody kind of a warm glow from behind. So it's a really fairly simple lighting concept, uh, but it gives me lots of room to move things around. And because we are in an auditorium, this isn't like playing in a giant football stadium where you have all kinds of wild light effects. Uh, the light is static. It's not changing. It's not moving. And that works, again, for this scenario. Uh, it's the kind of thing that you should think about when you're setting up your first music video. You uh, have that pre-recorded track with the click, right? It sounds like this. You're going to play this back as you're recording the video. The band hears this. They hear the click. So the drummer's in sync, the bass player's in sync, and then the lyrics kick in. The singers can sing exactly to the right time. They move their mouths in time to the music. Playback, go. Now the secret to making all this work and where this is a real lifesaver for you for editing is you have to make sure that you're actually recording ambient sound on all your cameras that are going to be in play. Playback, go. Now you're not going to use that sound in the final edit. What you're going to do is you're going to use that sound on all the camera to synchronize all the different takes and that way all the cameras are lined up properly instead of you having to manually move things around. The other way to do this is to use, you know, a motion picture slate with time code on it or something like that, but you don't actually need to do this because with the audio track, most of the editing softwares will automatically synchronize all the takes. It's fantastic. You couldn't ask for anything better. So I strongly, so I strongly suggest do it this way. Make your life easier, okay? Now when you get to location, as you can see, there is a lot of gear, but it's certainly not overwhelming. This is not a full-blown Hollywood production. But you need to prioritize what's going to get set up first. So I'm getting the band to set up their equipment first before I can do anything else, because there's going to be lights on stage. Before I get the lights, I need to get the band in position. And then I can start setting up the lights in the front, set that as my main lights, the ones on the side. I actually use a meter to get everything balanced the way I want. Once the lights are set up, I can then start getting the cameras on stage and wherever else I need them. So here's a small dolly track 
basically two rails with kind of a giant skateboard thing on it. Wait, and this is my main camera. The A camera is a GFX 100 with the uh, 3264 zoom on it. So the camera can go left and right and we can zoom in and out and that gives me the main shots. The second camera is a Fujifilm X-T3 with the MKX zoom on it. Uh, I use the 1855 for the most part. It's an awesome movie setup and this camera being on a tripod is going to give me a very different look and feel from the GFX 100 which is on the dolly. But I could also then move the uh, tripod camera wherever I want. I put it on the right, I can move it on the left. And uh, what you want to do is you roll both cameras at once. And as one camera is moving, one can be steady. You have the cameras focusing on different people at different times. And the whole point is to build up a whole bunch of choices of editing uh, options. I put the camera down low, right underneath the dolly at some point, and then the GFX 100, we did some handheld, because it has the IBIS. And I also put the X-T3 on a gimbal. Uh, the whole point of this is to be able to give me different kinds of movements, uh, different sort of lenses, lots of editing options. A very important shot we had to do was of this mysterious woman that's watching the whole show. So that was shot on the floor of the auditorium. So here we had two cameras on tripods as she walks in and sits down. And then we filmed the entire performance of her actually watching the show. And going into this dream of sorts where she imagines she's on stage. And uh, the dream sequences were really fun. So here I decided to go completely handheld. Wasn't trying to be steady. I used a very, very slow shutter speed. But you also see I have a floating light that was giving me lots of different colors. Uh, so it made it feel more dreamlike. And then the very last thing that we shot, believe it or not, was actually the most important shot. And this was the wide angle from the back of the house, looking at the entire stage, the entire band. You shoot the performance all the way through. This camera is locked off. And this is basically your master camera. This is the camera you go back to when you can't get anything else. Very, very important. You have to get this shot. So now we're going to go into a little bit of post-production and the basics of editing. Uh, hopefully your shoot went well, you got a little bit of rest, and everybody went home happy. So the first thing you need to do, either the day of or immediately the next morning of your shoot, is take all your files, you're going to put them on a hard drive, on your computer or an external hard drive, and then the second thing you're going to do is you're going to take all those files and back it up to another hard drive or a flash drive, or a USB stick, or something. Please, please, please back it up. Do not just put it on one hard drive and leave it there. Um, better still, if you can live without the SD cards or the compact flashes, whatever you record it on, leave the cards intact. Don't erase the files. Just take all your cards, put them off to the side, and just don't touch them. If you don't have to use them for an upcoming shoot, keep them there for safety's sake. So now, once you have everything in the computer, you need to go through every single file that's on there. Yes, all of them. Do not just start deleting things. Go through, play every single one from start to finish. Because A, you need to find the best ones, because there may be good, 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 but then there'll be best. Or there may be, eh, you know, not some good ones, and maybe some decent ones, or maybe there's somewhere the middle section is fantastic, but the beginning and the end, maybe the focus was off, things like that. And as you go through, you start making notes. They don't have to be fancy. These are mine. Uh, and it just basically gives me the four numbers of the file and a quick description like dolly, um, close-up, drums, uh, shadow, door, things like that. All right, just so what I know what they are but I've picked the ones that I am going to end up importing into my editing software. You're gonna leave everything in place, but these are my selects. What very often happens though, is that as you're going through the editing, even from your favorite list, you will find that there is some kind of a gap, something that isn't quite working right, and it'll be really helpful to go back to all those other files and find what's magic in there. Now the magic of editing. So as you can see, these are the selected clips I brought in. Um, I've given them descriptive names so I know what they are. These are the, going to be the main angles that I want to edit from. 
I'm going to choose 16 of them um, and I am going to have the computer put them together into basically one container. I'm going to put them together into one clip. So this is going to be a clip that has multiple cameras in it but in the edit it behaves as a, uh, basically a single file. I'm going to ignore the timecode. We don't need timecode because we're going to use the audio soundtrack from the uh, acquisition to synchronize all the angles. So this is the super cool magic part. When I say create it, as you can see up there it says synchronizing angles. The software is analyzing the waveforms of all the camera files, looking at the peaks, the valleys, the highs and the lows, and lining all those up in the correct order so that they behave at, as if they were shot at the same time, even though they weren't. But it's all because I have that click track. So now I can go to playback, I can look at the angles in my software, and as I play this back in time, you simply click and choose whichever camera angle you want at whatever moment you want. There you go. That's how you make a music video. It's a really, really fun process, and working with musicians is always really uh, enjoyable and interesting. Uh, go out there, make movies, um, use Fujifilm cameras. Thanks. Bye.